Hey, what's up, guys? Woke up to the news today that Avicii has died at the age of 28, and I just kind of want to unpack my feelings about the whole thing. Um, I feel that this is a, uh, a physical, I guess, manifestation, an extreme example of the, the problem in the, the music industry, uh, touring musicians and uh, sensitive people, creatives like you and me. Um, so all due respect to the families, um, the cause is, um, there's no details on the cause of death, but it's, um, very apparent of the, the cause is very apparent. And uh, again, all due respect to the families during this process. I kind of want to make this video and unpack some things. I made a video a little bit ago about the, uh, the prevalence of amphetamine abuse in the studio. Um, just speaking about my experience, and a lot of people had similar experiences about uh, that sort of thing. The, the life of a touring musician um, is a whole other ball of wax, a whole other ball game, a whole other uh, thing like that. I've actually been on tours, um, not myself, but uh, supporting, and I, uh, I used to take part in uh, parties in the local scene. And it's just, you know, for someone who has substance abuse, you can, you have something called a rider which is uh, what the venue or the promoter has to fulfill um, any special requests. And basically, you can put whatever you want on there, even illegal things not otherwise specified. Um, I remember such occasion where a particular artist was upset because this individual did not get sugar-free Red Bull while they had a baggie this full of cocaine and they had a hairbrush just shoveling it in. Um, and that was on the rider. Um, also a little bit of a per diem for um, service providers. So, you know, you can put all sorts of things on a rider, basically unlimited alcohol, um, uh, any other special request, and that's not conducive to someone who's struggling where it's available at all times. Um, Avicii had some substance abuse problems in the past, judging by a particular picture that was shared of him. Very thin, very uh, drawn out, like he was, you know, Conor McGregor cutting weight for a fight, just not eating, not sleeping, not drinking, you know, like just devastated. Uh, and he subsequently retired soon after that. Um, and I guess kind of went off the deep end again and uh, was found dead this morning. Um, a lot of speculation and, you know, it could be uh, counterfeit uh, medication. It could be he drank himself to death. But it's, it's something that we all have to be wary of and be careful. Um, I myself, I see myself as a sensitive person uh, with a little bit of anxiety. And, you know, I feel safe right here and I feel safe talking uh, to you guys, you know, on a tour or in public. I am a mess. And uh, I use uh, alcohol as a social lubricant as a way to uh, not feel the anxiety of being around people. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, some people, like, I, I can't have just one bottle of beer. I need to have, like, a bunch. And I don't really drink. I, there's no alcohol in the house. I don't drink at all. Uh, in the house, just kind of just sitting here very, very rarely. Uh, but when I'm out, it's just, you know, I can just slam them back. And I guess that's the Irish or the Ukrainian, who knows. But uh, yeah, if I was on a tour and it was unlimited and I could ask for anything that I wanted, I could see myself kind of going down this path also. So it's important to, it's important to know and stop these things from occurring 
before they start. Now, I have almost 150,000 subscribers, and, you know, if a couple of those go on to be touring musicians or are involved in supporting touring musicians or are involved in a tour in some way, I really hope that uh, we're all careful. Um, it's so easy to just get that dopamine drip going and just uh, not be healthy and not take care of yourself. Like I was recently on a tour and it was, you know, a very healthy one, but it was, you know, very hard, especially when there was no um, abuse going on. It's just, you know, you're there, you pack up, you go to another town or a city, and then, you know, you unpack, you set up, you, do, you talk to people or whatever, and it gets really intense, and you kind of turn into an asshole, and you become numb because it's just a constant turnover of people, and, you know, they offer, hey, do you want a drink? you want a da-da-da-da? And it's, uh, it's one of those things. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard to see um, someone who's, you know, someone who is so talented and uh, so uh, cutting edge and uh, who changed the face. You know, one of the first people that was uh, on the radio, mainstream radio for an EDM song, you know, just kind of um, set in footsteps that a lot of others could follow. Um so young, so talented, you know, the cliche. But really, it's just, look, what else can you say? There's something deep, deep sadness, a deep empty hole that he had where you could have anything you want. You had mansions, you had money, you had women, um... Anything, anything you wanted, people, you know, people around you, like just, and something was missing where you had, you know, the bottle. That's all you had at the end of the day. And there was a recent Vice article, it's called uh, Depression Isolation, well, it was not recent, 2016 but depression isolate isolation and drug addiction where DJing becomes a mental health issue and that's absolutely true and I was reminded of this um, we all got to be careful regardless it's so easy to go off the deep end and no judgment whatsoever it's it's just the saddest thing in the world to see and I can I can relate I can relate quite a bit. Um, you know we're all sensitive, creative types, who you know we just go out into the world and we're just super sensitive to every single piece of judgment, every single face. You're you're paranoid. There's sharks out there. They want something from you. They're nice on the surface. And at the end, you're just you're just struggling. Anyway, I'm rambling on enough. I want to say, rest in peace, Avicii. I hope that this uh, is not in vain. I hope that this sets forth a precedent where people will get help and something will change, just like the Me Too movement. I hope that something changes and that we're all a little bit careful and on the off chance that uh, you have someone in your life who you see has a problem, say something about it. Um, you know, there's, there's services out there. Just say, hey man, you know, do you need help? Do you need what's going on? I've noticed this, this, and this, and this and approach them without judgment and just say, I, I care about you and this is hard to see. You know what I mean? And do what you gotta do to help people. Anyway, kind of a bummer video. It's a bummer day. 
let's uh let's turn this into a positive and uh thanks for watching and i uh, hope you have a good weekend